Okay, so today to continue focusing on a different uh, Black artist every day of Black History Month in February 2024, I want to talk to you a little bit about Betty Saar. Again, these are really short, just kind of introductory um, clips going into the work and lives of these different artists, and I encourage you to do your own research and, and find out more about them. Betty Saar is kind of a legend in the contemporary art world. She was born in 1926 in LA. She's still alive. She's still making work. Um, our own art museum, our local art museum to where I teach in Springfield, Missouri, has one of her works and a couple of works by her daughter, Alison Saar, who is also a renowned contemporary artist. Betty Saar is best known for her assemblage work. Assemblage is a sculptural technique where you take existing um, items found sculpture, existing pieces or uh, disparate parts of something and assemble them into something new. She's also a painter. She's also a printmaker. She went to UCLA and then did uh, graduate studies at the University of California, Long Beach and the University of California, Southern California and the American Film Institute. She's kind of a Renaissance woman in that way. She's done a lot of different kinds of media and a lot of different kinds of work. She started making assemblage work in 1967 after being inspired by the work of Joseph Cornell. She has a mixed ancestry of African American, Native American, and Irish heritage. She reflects on that heritage in a lot of her work. She considers herself a feminist, but generally emphasizes the cross-cultural aspects of her work and her interest in reclaiming the Black female body. This 1972 work is called The Liberation of Aunt Jemima, um, it's one of her more famous works. She wanted to reflect on the Black experience in America, and here she's using the Aunt Jemima character to draw out the stereotype of being Black and particularly being a Black woman in America. She stands here, uh, if we look at this, this figure, if we look a little bit at this piece, the Aunt Jemima figure stands on cotton, which references slavery. When she speaks about this work, Betty Sarr famously talks about the cultural perception that Black women were not good enough, but good enough to serve. And that kind of, uh, that quote really gets to the core of, of the message in this work and how she's subverting that idea. Her goal is to confront and subvert this idea of um, being not good enough and the idea of only being good enough for servitude. And all of her work really kind of attacks that idea and subverts it. Jemima here holds a broom in one hand, but she has a rifle in the other. This is a visual representation of resistance um, and both resistance of women's work and uh, inequality toward women and also uh, resistance towards this idea of subservience being inherent to blackness in America. Um, Sar it said of this piece, I used the derogatory image to empower the black woman by making her a revolutionary. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, she was rebelling against her past enslavement. Um, so in her work, she takes a lot of these recognizable figures from pop culture like Aunt Jemima, similar to what we saw in Faith Ringgold's quilt featuring Aunt Jemima, and then she rebrands and recontextualizes that image. You'll notice also the raised clenched fist um, painted on the, the image in front of Aunt Jemima in this depiction. It's the raised clenched black fist of the black power movement, and you'll notice that the nail is painted red. So that's, again, bringing in that intersexual um, feminism, bringing in the idea of this work and, and her larger body of work confronting both um, ideas of inequality based on race and also gender. Betty Saar, one of, one of the greats.